Have I ever told you guys, I hate days where I have to sit in and do office work. Ah! Hello, welcome back to the vlogs. Another vlog, another week. If you like your Fulkery, why not subscribe to the World of Fulkery magazine? And you can check out my latest article in there, which is all about my cock-ups and faux pas. Not something everyone admits to, but you know me. You can learn from my mistakes, no problem at all. Enjoy the rest of the video as much as hopefully we're enjoying a beautiful day. Out with the pups. See you in a bit. If you haven't seen her before, this is Bentley. She's a hooded vulture and Bentley wants some food. Hold on, Bentley, it's coming. Ready, go. Being a vulture doesn't mean she wants rotten food. Would you want rotten food if you had the choice? She eats dead stuff. And people think, well, they eat dead things. They, eat, they like rotten meat. But of course, you all eat dead things, or most of you do, but you like it fresh. They can stomach terrible rot, but of course, they'd rather not eat that if they can find a fresh carcass instead. Far nicer, I'm sure. Hold on, I'm coming. Oh, what have we got here? We've got a nice pot of soil, courtesy of the Mole Hills. And two polecats climbing up my leg, yellow. So, we'll see what they like. Fer uh, ferrets or polecats love digging, so we're going to put this in here and see what they do. So, Annie, would you mind holding them? Yeah, I'll hold them <laughs> fine, darling. Yeah, oh God, they're, gonna go they're going up my leg, look at these. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come here. In theory, they should start digging. There we go. What are you doing? No, he's... And the best thing is their fur, because the way their fur is designed, they're almost like Teflon, so all the, the soil will basically just fall off of them. So you can cover it in it and it all just comes off. What do you think? <laughs> He's got tickly armpits, this one. What do you think? You dig. Dig, dig. Today's job is put some black plastic front lining on the Aplomados, this lanner, and the lugger at the front of their Averys. You'll see what I mean when I've done it. But basically, if you look in here, these haven't been cleaned today, but if you look in here, you can see there's poo here. There's some poo down there. Water bowl's clean, but it might not have been, if that makes sense. It could have feathers in it, it could have algae in it in the summer and so on. Now, all that's hosed down every day. Hold on, let's back off. They're molting, they're a bit fat. But at the end of the day, if you clean that out well at 9 a.m. and we open our gates in the summer, let's say 11 a.m., those birds could have pooed or muted or sliced, depending on the birds, all over the place. And it still looks poo, it's still poo on the gravel. It looks less than spotless. I always strive for Icarus Fulkery to be immaculate as, as best places you could go to see for bird husbandry. The public perception of poo, maybe it's just pooed in its water bowl, literally just before you open, but you cleaned it two, two hours before. It still looks less than perfect, but by covering up the front strip at the bottom there, it hides the substrate from the public eye. The poo on the gravel makes no difference to those birds, health, hygiene, welfare in any way. But of course, the general public are first to point out 
Oh, look at the poor thing. There's poo in there. Take it from the visible eye, sleight of hand, presentation is better for the public. It makes no difference to the birds anyway, but it's all about public presentation and perception and the way the, the uneducated public perceive things. And it really is that attention to detail that makes the place that cut above and keeps Icarus falconry looking really, really pristine. And, and it never will be because we keep animals, but that, if you have that as your goal, you're in the right direction for sure. So you can guarantee when you work with any sheet material, it's gonna turn into the windiest day ever. But here we are. Excuse the muddy footprints, that'll sponge off. What does it provide for the birds? A little bit of windproofing if they're on the ground, I guess, but nothing really. That's just for aesthetic beauty, and it just makes the aviaries look different. If you keep an aquarium, and you've got a couple of inches of gravel along the bottom, you'll often put black tape or something along the bottom to hide the edge of that substrate. It's a similar kind of thing. It just takes away some of the inherent scruffiness of the gravel and any poo. That's the best way I can describe it. Would it look better in tongue and groove wood? Absolutely. This takes no care. It lasts years, even in full sun, even in the UV. It's just damp proof membrane. It's my now go-to building material to fix anything. Yes, it would look nicer with tongue and groove wood across there. The difference is this. And this is what I haven't got to spend on things like this, but I can still make it look beautiful for a bit of elbow grease and not a lot of cost. It at least helps the look of the overall project. Still more to do, Aplomado's next. <laughs> the mangrove in the day, no problem. It's just a different mode. Turn the lights on after dark and <laughs> look at the reach of this thing. It just thinks I'm offering food and my hand is not on the menu. <laughs> Go on, back in you go. <laughs> what a gorgeous creature. So at night, the vivarium opens, food comes its way in the day, very different. And it knows that it's just reacting. It's in hunting mode, and it's thinking I'm about to bring in food. So it's coming out to meet me, waiting halfway. What a beautiful, beautiful creature though, it really is. Really is a stunning, stunning animal. They may not be exactly intelligent creatures, snakes really, but not of high intelligence, but they're certainly more than capable of getting in routines and knowing what things are happening when. Especially like a lot of predators, if that's motivated by food. Well, lunchtime until 7.30 in the evening, sitting on a laptop, not my kind of thing but sadly it's all part of the job and it's something i have to do every single day usually an hour or two at most but at this time of the year kids are back to school the teachers are starting to think about their topics their curriculum and who they can get in with various animals to cover those topics and bring them to life so at the moment thankfully a big flood of emails constantly coming in to book me via raptor exotics all good stuff. I've just had six weeks without a penny of paid work. Just work. No school visits. And that's what pays my wages. Of course, it's always work. There's always loads to do. And I've now got two hours of cleaning out the reptile and exotic room. And then I've still got another video to make for YouTube. And then it's shower and bed. Look at this. Eastern indigo snake. Look at that. How lucky am I? Be able to work with such an amazing, beautiful, excuse me, look at the iridescence on that. Look at that. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see. Is it going to catch the light? Maybe not, but beautiful, iridescent species of snake. I don't know where he's going. Oh. Trying to get in there with a mangrove snake. Who would eat who in that competition? I don't know. Look at that. I used to. <laughs> it's so iridescent here, but I just don't think it's coming up on the camera. Beautiful. Look at 
that. What a beautiful species that is. And how about a big yellowtail cream hoo female? <laughs> Not a constrictor snake. And yet, the strength in this guy's coils, or this girl's coils, absolutely ridiculous. It's not a constrictor. He's hissing and puffing a little bit. But very, very strong. The Kribos, the dry marcons, indigo snakes. The grip, it's like the Kraken's got me around the neck. And yet, they're not constrictors. They just bite and bludgeon their prey to death. The male's gone into blue, he's getting into shed. <laughs> Not handled very often. As you can tell, came to me as adults. The other tails are flighty anyway. But what a beautiful creature that is. Not going to focus on her. The male, much, much brighter colours, but not at the moment. He's in shed. I'm going to be hissing and wheezing in a minute myself. Let's pop her, pop her away. Much smaller. Much smaller. But my goodness, the grey banded king snake. Hold on. It's not going to focus on him. Oh, look at that. What a beauty. You've seen him before. But what a stunning snake that is. What about these? <laughs> Green Baron's Racers. By the way, check out the reptile playlist on the channel if these are your things. Lots more standalone reptile videos now. Growing all the time. But look at that. Just nature's wonders. Look at that. And his cute little Pinocchio nose. <laughs> Beautiful. Lots of growing still to do for these guys. These girls as they actually are. Anyway, lots more to do. Hello. What about these? Vietnamese blue beauties. Quite snappy sometimes. This is the smallest of them all. Here. She's separate from the other three because she's still got a bit of catching up to do. Look at that typical blue beauty pose. Whoa! And that's why. How to be defensive. Let's be, whoa, let's be offensive. Stunning snakes though, look at this. The blue, the Vietnamese. Blue beauty snake. We still not see enough invertebrates on this channel. Look at this. Asian forest scorpion, of which there are several very similar species. I found these in rainforests in Thailand I can tell you something now. When they're wild and worried, they can't half pinch with those pincers. Whether you've got hold of the sting or not. Look at these little beady eyes. And that sort of spandex stretch stretch panel in the side there. So when the gum is good and they are finding lots of food, they can still eat plenty despite that heavy armor plating. There's the tails and the sting on there. These guys, for me, they just hurt when they sting. It goes off pretty quick. Covered in sensory hairs. As you can imagine, its eyesight is absolutely useless. It doesn't have antennae, but it does have a body covered from one end to the other in sensory hairs, as well as Two special bits of kit underneath its tummy called pectines that can pick up chemicals from the ground and possibly vibrations too. I absolutely adore scorpions, they fascinate me and always have done. Gertrude, a great star to many a rainforest school tour. It sure is windy out here. Now, 
my namesake of sorts, Roy Sharp, not with an E, tells me, Dave, you've got to get on TikTok, get down with the young'uns. So we are, we're on TikTok, don't know what I'm doing, haven't got a clue, go over there, help me out. I don't even know how to ask you how to help me out, but whatever you have to do on TikTok, go and have a look. Same, same as the channel, Dave Sharp, Nature Boy. And for a little while now, we've been on Instagram too, Dave Sharp, Nature Boy. Go and check it out on there. That's it, yeah, help me. Don't know how, don't know what I'm doing. Go and have a look. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs>